Yay. Okay. Yes, she's making a tiki bar. Can you believe that? Tiki. Okay, I'm going to show the tiki. Now, if you want to make it along with us, I should have said, I should have announced this. I, on our blog, um, which is, uh, what's the name? What's our blog? <laughs> it's scrappycampersisters.blogspot.com. If you go on there, I've got this already uploaded, a PDF file of the um, walkthrough of how to do the mini. I don't have pictures on this one because um, to upload it probably take forever. And I didn't do it to Scribd because I, I finally got the tutorial done last night and uh, I didn't, and it was like 1 a.m. by the time I got it up onto the blog. But um, so if you want to go run and print it out and you want to walk through it and you can make, you don't have to do any of the paper. You could just be cutting out chipboard. You just need two pieces of 12 by 12 chipboard. And um, and then you can dec then you can decorate it after. Hey, Kathy. So let me see if I missed anybody. Scrappy lady, hello. I said hi to Chai and Tracy and Kathleen, and I said hi to Jean M W Scrap and Murfet. It's Jess. I'm a stamper. I'm not. I'm not a very good stamper, but I stamp. That's why I'm so happy. Happy grunge stamping came in, so I don't have to be. So anyway, so go to our blog and um, did you? Oh, you put it up there. Thank you, Darcy. Yeah. And you can um, you can just scrap along with us. But eventually, on Scrib D, we'll have one with the pictures because I just sent the pictures to Darcy and. She does a great job on our tutorials. I don't do them. I type them up. They look like this when I send them to her, and then she puts all the fancy pictures in. And I got a black screen. Oh, there we go. It's back. Okay. You scared me. And okay, so anyway, so here's the little tiki. Here's the little tiki, and um, the album is inside, and it just slides out. And I hope I didn't glue it shut because I put glue on it and then stuck it in. Okay, I had to put it in backward because um, I had to put it in backward. This is why. That makes me thirsty looking at that though, man. <laughs> I might have to disappear for a minute. Because I don't, I'm not going to drink in the morning. Uh, oh, by the way, Jonna, yeah. you'll be happy to know that there are some of my favorite ladies here who are from one of my favorite places in the world. Vancouver Island. Woohoo! And there's somebody, and they might not want people to know that they live there, but they live in Victoria. Oh my gosh, I loved Victoria. Oh, is that who you were talking with and said that I ate my whole plate of macaroni and cheese? Yes. Oh my god. <laughs> we should post that to the blog. This is the first time I ever saw her eat an entire meal. And it was a huge bowl of macaroni and cheese in Victoria, British Columbia. Oh, like, it was so good. It was like so homemade. <laughs> I mean, they used the best cheese. I mean, everything about it was just delicious. I couldn't stop myself. That's all I ate. I didn't have anything else. It was probably that fantastic Canadian cheddar or something. Oh like my gosh. Good. Yeah, it was just delicious. So we, we have three. The name of that restaurant. I think I have a picture of the sign. We have three. Um, oh, yeah, that was on our that was on our Alaska trip. Okay, yeah. um, hang on because I can get it. I'm gonna have it. Okay. okay. There was um, you, some of you who know Victoria would know this because there were two buildings that were identical, and they're across the street from each other. One was completely and totally restored and made into a hotel and restaurant, and the other one was still in its original state. And it was unbelievable how um, beautiful it was restored. I mean, the architecture there is just gorgeous. This is the state of my Alaska album. <laughs> it's a, a bin <laughs> with ephemera and <laughs> Alaska album still a bin. <laughs> yes. And okay, see, because this is the we made this um. We, we made this journal. We went on a cruise with Therese Collins. Um, and, okay, let's see. 
So, and this was the album that we made. And I, look at, I even, okay, I even brought my printer on the cruise ship with me. I have one of those little mini Canon Elf printers or whatever, Elf Selfie. And um, they, they, I printed out everything and I still didn't even get them in my album. Okay, I think this is it right here. Is that it? No, Alaskan Hotel. Maybe I didn't print out the ones from Victoria. Train. Let me see. It might be in a different page, maybe. Yeah, that's as far as I got. I got like one day. Maybe farther down because it was at the end of the trip. Yeah, I don't know that. Maybe I didn't print those out yet. Um, Sorry for the crinkling. Where's Port Al Do you call it Alberni or Alberni? Maybe I saved something from the restaurant. Oh, John, I'm going to check to make sure it's still recording because we got like a black screen for a second and then it popped back up. It says it's recording. Okay, good. How can you tell if it's recording? It says stop record. It's still it's okay. red. That means it's still going. Okay. Okay, let me see real quick. I'll just go through this. Seattle. That's the cruise we went on. Juno. Nope. Okay, no, I don't have anything from the restaurant. Oh, yeah, for sure. I have those two um, antique. I have, or I have that one antique um, postcard, vintage postcard that we got when we went antiquing. Okay. Anyway, okay, so I don't have it. Darn, rabbit trail. Okay, back to the tiki bar. <laughs> It wasn't that hard to get to. I have all my projects. I have a picture. I could always get you the picture. Oh my gosh. I haven't turned it out yet. Hilarious. Okay, so we're getting back to the cheeky bar. Okay, let's get started. But anyway, the reason why I had to put it in backward was because these, I put magnets, I decided to put magnets in this one. The first one I did, I didn't put magnets in it, and it worked fine because this is heavy like this your album in here is heavy and it hangs down and it holds it closed and it was fine um then i put the magnets in and it bowed out for some reason and i didn't like it and when you put it in backward it sits okay um but when you put it in forward you can see this it'll, it'll pop out so that kind of irritated me i didn't like it and that's why i put it in backward so darcy's typing away so anyway, let's get to work. The first thing we're going to do is um, you're going to cut your chipboard at 11 and 3 quarters by 5 and a quarter. So 11 and 3 quarters uh, by 5 and a quarter. 3 quarters and 5 and a quarter. And I'm going to grab mine and my thumb. By the magic of television, I already have mine cut out. <laughs> hey, cut. Heavenly Ma'am made it. Yay! Hey, Heavenly! We're just getting started. So, 11 and 3 quarters by 5 and a quarter, you want one piece of chipboard. And what we're going to start working on is we're making the outer part of the, of the bar. Okay? Yeah, Ty, she does that for me because I'm fraction challenged. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, this is an option. You can do this or you don't have to do it. But what I did was I used a, um, when I went to Scrapbook Expo, I found, I found this guy who makes, it's called Clear Scraps. And he had a stencil, bamboo stencil, in the size that would work out great. It was a six by six bamboo stencil, um, which we are going to do a drawing for a stencil sometime during the daily. Oh, that's the other thing. Okay, I want, I'm gonna do a drawing for the tiki bar we're making during this class. So what we're gonna do is like we did last, we did the last time I did the drawing, when we do the tiki bar drawing, you we're going to take all the names out of the chat 
and then we're going to put you in and we'll draw darcy will draw a name out and that's who will win the um tiki bar so that if it takes five hours you don't have to sit here five hours to be able to win the tiki bar but if um you stay we've got some other gifts we're giving away during the class so just because so i'm going to give away one of these um uh, we're going to give away one of these uh stencils so that when you get it you can make your own bamboo thing so i use the stencil and i use mo modeling paste modeling paste or molding, mold, mold, molding paste whatever you want to call it and i can do a quick quick demo if you want um let me get my messy mat out though because i don't want to i got my clean one here let's take this one and what you're going to do is lay this down and I'm going to use a little bit, sorry, my tape is in front of me I'm on a ruler. And I'm yeah, going to. Yeah, mom's going to call. Does she know we're on? Oh, no, I forgot to tell her. I forgot to tell her. Okay, I'm just using Artist Loft. I believe this is Michael's brand. Is Artist Loft Michael's brand or Joanne's? I can't remember. And um, it's a lightweight modeling paste, molding paste, modeling paste. They call it modeling on here. Some of them call it molding. It's like a spackle for artists. And um, so anyway, I'm just going to squeeze some of this on. I just kind of run it across the top. And I may have to add more. And then I take a little squeegee, or you could use a credit card or whatever. And there's no prepping. And I'm just going to kind of, I just want a thin layer. Because I don't. Do we have enough girls that we could do a retreat up in British Columbia. Oh my gosh, that'd be fabulous. That would be fabulous. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of fill this in. And I'm using a second mat because I get this stuff everywhere. Like some people get ink everywhere. I get modeling paste everywhere. So it's like icing. I'm sure everybody's used this. It's been around and around and around for all different stuff. And you can add color to it, but I'm going to, instead of adding color, I uh, used an ink pad. Okay, so I did mine last night because um, then I'm just going to scrape off the excess. Cause... Hi, Pam. And I'm going to take it off. Oops. See, that's what happens. I get it everywhere because it drops. Then I'm going to spin it around. The only reason why I'm spinning it is because it's a long piece and I don't want to hit it. And I'm just going to come from the other side because I'm going to cut these apart anyway. So it won't matter that it looks upside down. And I'm just going to. Hey, Pabla. Good morning, camera. Say hi to Pam, too. Oh, hey, Pam. Oh, Mitzi's here. Hey, Mitzi. Hey, Mitzi. Hey, Darcy, by the way, what? I was in Mitzi's class. Did you buy one of those looper thingies from Vintage? No. Oh, okay. Then I don't hate you. Because <laughs> 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 I was in Mitzi's, I was in, we were in Mitzi's stream this week and she's like, oh, has John show, has Darcy showed you this? And it's the coolest thing. It's a, like a plier looking thing that, um that automatically loops does a loop like for beading and stuff it Puts does a single loop and i guess mitzi could tell us more about it but I, it seems like you would almost have to use half hard wire i don't know I, she'll know no she used all kinds of wire she demoed it for us in her class oh my gosh we tried every, we did art wire in there memory wire how to keep it from from the charm falling off because some people have had that problem oh i don't know well, knowing Mitzi, she did. She figured out how to make it work. 
Okay. Oh, so. Hi, you know what? The truth is, John, I may have ordered it, and it's just not here yet. <laughs> oh, my gosh. See? See? See that? Okay. So. Dad, when she says, hey, I saw this great thing, and I go, yeah, I have it. <laughs> I know. That's what I was telling him in the chat. I said, I'm like, hey, I saw this great thing, or I found this great thing. She's like, I got it. I'm like, oh, whatever. <laughs> you didn't even tell me. Okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, so but you know what we do? We have like this weird sister pack because if I go shopping and I find something I want, I know she's going to be, you know, she's going to want it. So I just buy her one. <laughs> Hence why my car will be full on the way up to my mom's this week. I have a whole box of stuff for her. Um, I do too. Okay. So I'm going to leave you with this. I got to go throw this in the sink so it doesn't dry on my stencil. So I'm going to leave you with Darcy and I will... Oh, that could be bad. Be right back. Let me see. Let's get a coffee. Okay, what? Well, yeah, go grab a grab a cup of coffee or a drink of water or something. I'll be right back. I'm just gonna throw this in the sink. Some pink tiki wine. <laughs> I'm gonna want pink tiki wine. That's bad. Maybe I'll get some pink punch. I'll get some pink lemonade later. I need to bling up her BRB. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. So what's Lynn doing, Mitzi? Oh, I know. My love's better. <laughs> oh my gosh. I need to try to call my mom and tell her we're on here because she was so funny. She was asking about the tiki hut, you know, and I said, well, are you going to make one? She's like, no, <laughs> she really wanted it. I said, why don't you make one for her, Jonna? Oh, see, that's good, Mitzi. Lynn bought a one-step looper and Mitzi's going to show it to her how to use it. Mitzi, let me tell you, Mitzi makes beaded chains faster than anyone I've ever seen. And the hard way, not with some looper thing. No, uh, Stu Somerset Studio Gallery Magazine. We'll have to go check it out. Who's in there, Somerset? The new one. Shai was saying, has anyone seen it? She said the art is really good. Oh, I just quickly looked at it while I was standing in line. My closest bookstore closed. It was a uh, um, Borders, so now I have to like drive farther to get to a bookstore. They carry them at Michaels, and Joanne's has them. I don't have a Joanne's. You don't have a Michaels? Yeah, but it's. Our. I'll go see if they have it there. My Michaels is like. <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna remove this one. This is the wet one. I've seen better Michaels. Let's put it that way. And. Ah. Yeah, do you know what? It really does depend on your on the Michaels because I have two. Well, actually, I have three like that I could choose from. Such a hurt. Oh, I have two. I have three. I do have three. There's one I forgot. Um, a little south of here, but it's like about 15 minutes away instead of eight. I have one that's picked over. How's that? Well, so the one that the one that's over on the south side of town, it's like a real ritzy area, and they uh, they had all the newest, latest stuff before the one in my area or the one that's a little farther out from me got it. Wow. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Um I told you we have it's an elitist country, even in the craft arena. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so I have one that's already dry. And I'm going to um I use Scattered straw on mine. Oh my goodness, what I do with it? I'm gonna move stuff around here. So I use scattered straw. Now you can add acrylic paint. You can color your your um, molding paste in before you do your stencil, but. I'm just going to go ahead and ink it. 
Because I figured if I put it out and I started mixing, I'd get it everywhere even more. My chances of getting it everywhere would be greater. So anyway, so all, you, all I'm going to do is go around and just kind of run in a circular motion. I'm going to rub it in. And then it starts to look like bamboo. I have that color. What? Scattered straw. It's one of my favorites. Yeah. If you can have a favorite. It's not it's just a, it's of all the yellows. I have a favorite. Unless you like lemonade is bright sunny yellow. But this is a good Do you have a favorite? Yeah, vintage photo. Remember I married it last year. And, oh gosh. <laughs> Vintage photo and I married last summer, oh. and many of you were there, as I recall. So I'm just doing this on a like a six by twelve piece of paper is what I used. Um, this is going to be matted on the front, but I'm just going to go ahead and do this and set it aside. But uh, if you're working with me this morning. Then you don't have to you don't have to do this until the very end. You can mat after your tiki is all put together. You can um, mat it after. So you can totally skip this part right now and do it later. Okay. So that's what we have. It's like shaded out bamboo. Wow, that's interesting because the camera picks it up as it's still being white, but when I look at it, it's yellow. That's weird. Put a little bit darker, some darker spots in here. Okay, I'm also using Kaiser Craft this morning. It's the Kaiser Craft um, Tropicana line is what I'm using. It's like all tropical paper goodness. Makes you want to sit under the tiki bar and drink delicious punches. Okay, so I'm going to set that aside, and I'm going to take this paper, out. That paper is gorgeous. It is. The whole line is just beautiful. Okay, so I'm going to get out my paper trimmer because I'm going to do some scoring. <laughs> Margaret wanted to know what a tiki was. A tiki? <laughs> yeah, well, I wonder why I call it, they call it a tiki bar. This is what we're making. Oh, a tiki is in the tiki that um well they call them tiki torches, and I then it came from like Hawaii. Yeah, and it has the little isn't a tiki the little man? Yes. Things. Little man. Thing. <laughs> okay, who got something for a dollar at Joanne's? <laughs> Just. Jess is telling me that vintage photo cheated on me with worn lipstick. Oh gosh, that's so funny. <laughs> funny. Okay, what I did was, what I'm doing is I'm going to score my chipboard. And I take an old, um, an old blade and I put a C on it because I know I use that for my chipboard. And that way I can, okay, um, Let's see, Jean's asking Wiki, Wikipedia. What? And that way I can just score it because you just want to lightly score because we're going to be folding it. But then we're going to, um, we are going to reinforce the folds so you don't have to worry about it tearing. But to fold the chipboard so we can do it all in one piece so we didn't have to piece it together, it was just easier to do it this way. So, um, the first score is at four and a quarter. Polynesia. Yeah, baby. Polynesian. So we got four and a quarter. And I'm just going to pull my blade. Whoop. 
pull my blade down and get a little score. And he refers to large wood and stone carvings of humanoid forms in central eastern Polynesian cultures of the Pacific Ocean. There you go. Just so you know. Then we're going to do five and seven eighths. Oh, God. Where's the seven eighths card? I have it. It's up right there. Oh, I have a lag. You need to hit pause and start again. Okay. That helps with the lag. I found that out. <laughs> Heavenly Man says, so it's those fierce, long looking, large, long headed thingamajiggies. Yes, it is. Yes. I think they're supposed to protect you or something. That's their belief. I believe. Okay, then we have to do um, 10 and 1 8. What? Jean's look, she's still looking. She goes, Tiki Bar is an exotic themed drinking establishment that serves elaborate cocktails, especially rum based mixed drinks such as the Mai Tai or Zong. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Jonna has exotic lemonade. That's about it. I have water with lemon in it because. Sorry, Sherry. What'd she do? It's 10 and 1 8. What'd she say 7 8 for? Oh, that was the last thing. Yeah, wow. 5 and 7 8. She's going act. That's okay, Sherry. That's why I have these. That's why I have flashcards. Because it's 8. Exactly. Okay, now, this is where you I have. Know, if you switch to metric, it would be so much easier. I gotta make sure that these line up at 1 and a half and 1. Okay, so I didn't cut this right because this should be. I mean, no one is going to make anything smaller than a millimeter. <laughs> Let me check this one and a half. This should be one and. Oh my goodness, I can't even see that. That's the one good thing. This has like really big. Yeah, it's one and. Okay. What's the old so, system? What's that? The old system. You mean inches and stuff is old? I thought metric was old. I don't know. We were on the metric system when I lived in Denmark, and as long as you don't have to convert back and forth, it is so easy. Okay. Okay. Ooh, for a second there, it looked a little funky. Okay. So I got that. Now what we're going to do is, I'm going to ink it first on the sides before I get it put together just because it's easier. You could paint it if you want. Oh. Oh my gosh, she's typing like a maniac. Okay, I need to make some of these reinforcement strips. Some people call them structure strips. I think Jim calls them structure strips. Okay, but we just want to reinforce the where it's um, folded. So we're just going to cut a couple of these. And I already have them all done up in craft color, but I didn't have any done in the straw. So... That's crooked. You know what? I would love. Oh, that stuff. That's the hard part, Jean. Is sitting there trying to remember things like that, converting back and forth. When I first got to Denmark, I was doing that in my head, trying to just get a picture of what things look like, and it was really hard. And then after about a year, I didn't have to do that anymore. Oh my goodness! The first time I was there, I had to cook Thanksgiving dinner for the family that was hosting me. And I, and I, of course, I had to call Darcy. 
and I know I talked about this one other time, but I was, I they asked me to make dinner for the first night I was there because they had, they both had work late and they had a teenage daughter. And I was like, sure, that's no problem. So, so anyway, so I'm trying to make, look for stuff in the house. Nothing is in pre-made. Everything is done from the bottom up, they call it, from scratch, everything. So the only thing I could find was already made. That's because they're, that's why their food's so much healthier for you. It's true. And um, no processed food. They don't do processed food. Although American foods are getting brought in over there, I did notice. But um, they, so anyway, so I go to, I'm like, okay, so um, I need to measure some flour. I need a cup. They're like, a cup? We don't have a cup. What's a cup? And I'm like, oh my goodness, no cup. So he goes and he gets me, um, they bring me the uh, a scale. And I'm like, what's this for? And they're like, because they weigh their food. I was like freaking out. I'm like, what? I don't even know what to do with a scale. How do you cook with a scale? So I ended up finding a teacup that looks kind of like a cup, like eight ounces. And I just rolled from in there. She calls me up and we're Skyping while she's making stuff. Oh, I had to make a I had to make a pumpkin pie from an actual pumpkin. Who does that? <laughs> <laughs> so it was so cute because she didn't know all the Danish words for the things she was looking for. Oh yeah, that was the other thing. Plus it's all in a foreign language that looks like no other language because they have their own alphabet system. <laughs> and the daughter was, was helping her, so I was translating into Danish the stuff that the daughter needed to pull from the refrigerator in the cabinet. It was not fun, let me tell you. In Denmark. Oh, I probably should cut these before I go. Excuse my hand, I gotta get my tape out. Yeah, I lived in Denmark for three years, a long time ago, and Jana went just a few short years ago, and she spent Christmas there. I spent three months there with my sister for a summer, then I spent three months there, yeah, over Thanksgiving, Christmas, January, New Year's. Yeah, and uh, Margaret was saying they weigh everything. I know, and I actually like that system better. That was so much easier than trying to figure out uh, a liquid, like a liquid measure from a solid measure. And yeah. But if all you've ever known was how to do it here, it's very difficult. Check the recording, Jonna, because the camera just turned black again and then came back on. Oh. Yeah, it says stop record. Okay. It's actually easy. I, yeah, it's actually not hard to weigh. As a matter of fact, when um, I got used to weighing everything, then when I started mixing pottery glazes, it was really easy because it's all done by weight. Okay, I'm just going to trim these down where I need them. I think it's five and a quarter. Like I said, when it gets hard is when you're trying to switch. And then when you have to convert it, like they tell you it's so many centimeters, so many this or so many that, and then you have to convert it to whatever it is you're doing, that's way hard. But if you can just stay in one system or the other, it's actually easy. Oops. Oops, everything's falling out. Five and a quarter. Okay, so you need a couple of these at a five and a quarter. We're still building the box. Yeah, this is still the outside of the TV. <laughs> okay, so you need a couple of those at five and a quarter. I might want to show that again once you get past the spot. Um, we're building this part that houses the mini. 
Okay, so now what you want to do is we're going to take these. Um, first, you're going to take one strip and you're going to fold it where the where the uh, adhesive is on the outside. Oh yeah, there you go. I'm a stamper. <laughs> That's why she loves Google because it converts for her. Oh yes. Oh my gosh, I lived off Google while I was there. <laughs> totally, totally lived off of it. Uh, I love Google too. That's my go-to. So we're just gonna come in and. Uh, you're going to line this up along the edge, and this is how you're going to stick the two together. And I should have, before I do that, I want to, <clears throat> let me put this back on. I want to do one side first, and then I want to mat it, because I'm going to show you why. Because I matted first, and then I went in and I put my strip in, and so now I have that little strip going down, which isn't any big deal, because on the inside, this is mine. Because I'm giving this away, I'm going to do it. Now <laughs> I figured out. You need to put your strip down first on one side, and then we're going to mat this piece, okay? So let's pick out some paper to mat. And let's go with this. Pokey dotty. And you can do it all one piece, but I only have a six and a half by six and a half piece of uh, a book. So. So, John, when Jean was there with her niece, they were, they spent like a day in Copenhagen, and I told them to take the canal cruise. Oh, nice. Yeah. So pretty. They were showing it on House Hunters International the other day. They were? Yes. And I, oh, where was it? I wanted to move to. Oh, my gosh. I saw this house, and it was on the beach, and it was in... No, it wasn't in Fiji. Oh, no. Don't even. It was on an island in the Pacific. Name another island. Bali. Was it Bali? No. But it wasn't actually on the main island. Maybe. Does Fiji have, like, two islands? Several no, islands? Well, Bali. Well, Indonesia has lots of islands. Mm, I can't remember. This wasn't on the main island. This was on a little separate island. But it was pretty big enough island, had little towns and stuff. I can't remember the name of it now. Was it in the Pacific? Yes, it was in the Pacific. It was, and the houses, the houses were so-so. I mean, they were nice, but the property, oh my, and the houses weren't that bad. I think the people were only looking at, I mean, relatively for a beach house, they were only looking at 300, spending 300,000. Wow. And one of them had two acres. Oh my gosh. It was like amazing. I, I can't watch that stuff. I get so jello when I see that. I was totally, I was totally, I was totally. You know what? Rather than getting jello, I should just be saving my money and not buying so much carp. Uh oh. Then I could have a beach house someday. Okay, so this is four and eight. So I need two at four and eight. Was it four and eight or yeah, four and eight, four and eight. And then the centerpiece is that little flat thing. Is oh my gosh, I do it on the scored side because I can't see that. One and about seven, one and three quarters. Getting to that beach house. Yeah, I know, Jean. Oh my gosh, because there are places still in the Caribbean that would be very affordable, but getting to them is outrageous. And then, like, you're kind of trapped. If anything happens, Jonna and I were talking about this, like, a you know, there's a volcano or there's something, a hurricane or a tsunami or whatever, you're like trapped on an island. Okay. Okay, so I bought this new glue cuz it was on sale and I'm going to try it out. It's Helmar. It was on it was on clearance for 4.19 and then it was an extra something off that day I went. I forgot. 
but um, it's the craft and hobby. It's PVA glue, and I've heard. Um, oh yeah. Yeah, Karen Ellis. She uses PVA. She talks about PVA all the time. And yeah. so I thought I'm just gonna try this out and see how this works in, in Florida and see how I like it. You know, you, you really do have to try different adhesives because they're so different in each climate. Like a lot of people love Fabri-Tac, but here it's so goopy. Oh, I can't use Fabri-Tac here. It never dries. It takes forever to dry. Yeah, but it works fine in a in a less humid and cooler climate. I know we were having that conversation at, uh, in Catherine's class. Yeah, the scrap beach about what um, what adhesive works and what does what doesn't. Okay, see this is what. Well, she's gonna know because she's moved. She's moved a lot too, so she's probably had the same. Yeah, she said she used the red line glue here, which works fine in the winter. Uh, what I found is. It's, um, like, I can use anything in the winter months when it's not raining. Uh, but when it's humid, forget it. Nothing wants to stick. Okay, so, so far, I don't see any bubbling, which is a good sign. But you have to use your finger. Unless I use, oh, I could have used a, um, a paintbrush. That would have been smart. I'm going to go around because I like to get all the edges. It's really hard to see here where the creases are. Okay, paintbrush, because I'm sure people are freaking out that I'm getting glue on my fingers. I'm not. <laughs> paintbrush, and where's my little, where's my little green dish? I like Aileen's. I use Aileen's a lot. Man, you know, um, Didi, Didi, who was streaming and who may stream again, coffee and art in the morning, she, she likes Aileen's too. And I think it's because it works really well in our climate. Really? Uh-huh. But it makes the paper bubble. So far, I don't see any bubbling on this. No, you have to use a thin coat. And I like the quick dry, but it dry. Sometimes you don't need something that dries that quick. It dries. Yeah, you want to yeah. be able to slide it around. Yeah, so. it dries super, super quick. So so far, see, it doesn't matter. I still, I use the thingy. I still get glue on me. I use the brush. I still get glue on me. Oh my gosh! Um, our British Columbia, Vancouver Island girls are talking about. They said they're talking about earthquakes on the radio up there again. I know, Mitzi. Let's go. I like it. Although they're having earthquakes, why are you saying let's go? <laughs> Mitzi, no, we're going to an island. She says island oh. life is a life for me. She lives on an island. Oh, island life is the life. Yeah. As long as you don't have... Did I ever live on an island? Well... No, Florida is not an island. It's a peninsula. <laughs> Seattle was, was an island, right? In Denmark, I lived yes, on an island. Yes, that is an island. It's hard to tell now because they've got causeways everywhere. But back then, you had to take a ferry. <laughs> it took forever to get from one side of the country to the other. Now they have the underwater tunnel thing. Yeah, that's a little terrifying. I know. What if it collapsed while you were in there? That'd be scary. Does anybody go on the Chesapeake Bay Bridge and Tunnel? That thing's terrifying, too. It's cool. Yeah, we used to do that all the time going to Connecticut from D.C. Yeah. It's awesome, but it's scary. Oh, really? Okay, so, so far, I'm liking, I'm, I'm liking that glue, but I haven't bent anything yet, so now I don't know if I like it. Maybe I should just go back to my score tape scenario. I need to trim this down a little bit. I see I went a little bit over. Hi, Caleb. Caleb, do you like your new bedroom? Caleb has a red bedroom. He wanted red. Is he enjoying the house? Caleb, are you enjoying your new house? Oh, <laughs> 
think I'm gonna stick it on the outside. I would. On this one. Well, I was gonna put it, I'm gonna stick another one on the outside, but I was gonna put it, um, let me take some tape. Aw, that's so cute. Because, yep, I like it. Oh, uh, I, I like how it's it. lining up better. I like how it's lining up better on the outside. Aw, good. I'm glad. I just wanted one on the inside and one on the outside for, um, oh my gosh, Sandy. Yeah, Sandy, that's like me. I lived in Florida, never had a hurricane, had a few scares, moved to Connecticut. We had a hurricane, like within that month. That was crazy. Okay, now I'm going to go around and take all these. Actually, someone did a study of all of the things that could go wrong somewhere in a geographic location, and they came up with one location that doesn't have any incidents at all. Idaho. No, you're not going to believe it, John. What? It was on the, who is that guy? Um, something gun, the smoking gun. I don't know, this blog. But anyway, he did this whole thing. Romantic Connecticut. What? Nope. Never had an earthquake, tornado, hurricane, I don't know, mass killing, I don't know, whatever it was. Well, romantic. That's where um, the University of Connecticut is right near there. They must be living living life right. That no, they're in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> well, a lot of places are in the middle of nowhere and don't have anything happen. Well, I mean, that still has stuff happen. Nowhere that happened just a few weeks ago or last week with those tornadoes. That was in the middle of nowhere. That's crazy. And how about all the stu How about all the fires going on out in Colorado? I know that's so sad. So sad. I don't. Did they get it? Finally, get it all worked out? I don't know. Okay, I don't like my. I moved my trash can it's too far away from me. So I'm just taking these little uh, strips and I'm going around and kind of reinforcing my folds with them. And it's wow. a, Jean said they had 11 feet of snow in 2011. Oh, I cut that one way off. That's a lot. Okay, and that's that. skiing too, I bet you. Yeah. I don't know what happened with that one. I cut that one way short. Cut it out of I thought this was gonna go faster. Well, I've been. I'll try not to talk. You do all the talking. <laughs> you can talk. You know why it's not going? Because I decided. Because I had the um, tutorial up that people might want to make it with us, and so I was going a little. I didn't do any pre-cutting. Oh, that's fine. It's looking good. Normally, I would have pre-cut all this stuff. And well, we're going to appreciate it because it'll be on the recording. So, you'll, you know, you can follow along. But I'm really looking forward to the pink <laughs> tiki label. <laughs> pink tiki punch. Oh, my gosh. Okay, yeah. So, I started that Dr. Oz cleanse because I have had oh well, after I got back from Peru and I caught that um intestinal virus like I just have never felt I just never felt good I think it's because they pump these all through you know with medication and stuff to try to knock it out and <clears throat> so I decided okay I'm gonna and then I got the head cold which fortunately I only had it for 10 days Everybody else has had it for like seven weeks, six weeks. I'm hearing all these horror stories. So I had it 10 days. Never had to get on an antibiotic, probably because I still had antibiotics from when I was in January. I don't know if it stays in your system that long. But anyway, I um so I thought, you know what? I haven't been I haven't been sleeping well. I haven't done anything. So I went on the doctor I went on the Dr. Oz website and I've been doing that cleanse and let me tell you, you cannot finish those smoothies. They are so thick. Like, I can't, it takes me like three hours to drink one of those smoothies down. Well, they're probably disgusting too, so they're going to take longer. Well, I do have to say, um, 
the I didn't to, to be to be honest with you, the one that I didn't like the most was the morning one. And I think it's because of the raspberry seeds. I don't know if it's the seeds or the flax meal. Yeah. There's something gritty that you put in it and I don't like it. And then I determined I'm not real crazy about bananas in a smoothie. I, I like a banana, but I don't like a banana with other stuff. So I thought that was kind of interesting. That's what I kind of determined. But um, anyway, I feel better. I feel like I'm feeling better. We'll see. I'm not done yet. But I did want, I ended up last night, I ended up um, taking the celery out and I just, I ate the celery because I just wanted to chew something after two days. You just want to be, yeah. chew something. Yeah. So I figured, oh well. But they're not too bad. But it's weird because I had to put coconut oil in one of them and coconut oil is not coconut oil. Coconut oil is like coconut Crisco. It's like lard looking. And that was a little, it didn't grind down. Okay, that just sounds awful. Yeah, it didn't grind down. It was still in the, it was still in there. So that was kind of gross. Now, now I'm going, now you're going to, I'm going to gag. But everything else was good. <laughs> everything else was good. I'll try oh. not to gag. <laughs> yes, please try not to. So I'm just going to go in and hit these really quick with some ink. Okay, so that's that's it for the bottom, other than we're going to mat it. And let me get out my cutter. And uh, let's see, I need, I'm going now. This is where you have to be careful. If you're doing the bamboo thing, you got to make sure that you're doing your pattern right. So this measurement is four and oh my gosh. an eighth. So four and an eighth. And then this measurement's gonna be four and an eighth, so the bamboo's running this the right way. Four and an eighth. How did that thing end up being an eighth? Because of the chipboard. Uh, it's the thickness of the chipboard. Um, Sandy says you probably, you could have tried melting that coconut yuck first. Oh, but do you think it would have hardened up after I, um, <laughs> Kathy, smells nasty to drink. ingredients I didn't like and be a half detox person. It's only a tablespoon. It's not like it was that much. Ew. The morning one, I guess, so you get your fat in in the morning is um, almond butter, which is actually, I got organic almond butter, and that actually was really good. But everybody, yeah, but I mean, it has like blueberries and bananas and mango and pineapple, and it was just, the, the lunch one was a little cre creepy, but it tasted good, other than the coconut oil, but it tasted good. Um, this is why people aren't healthy, because that's the kind of stuff they tell you you have to do. You can't drink it fast. Oh my gosh, Chick, you can't drink it fast because, okay, it fills two of these. Two of these. You can't drink it fast. I tried. I thought I'll just ch chug it down. Ugh. So instead what I did was I ended up um, putting a lot of ice in it, and I didn't grind the ice. I just drank it cold. But it's I need to stop saying ugh. I, I know because it's really good for you. <laughs> it's really good for you. I kept saying, <laughs> That's not good. Okay, so then we got them at the bottom, which is. Uh, oh, yeah, this is where I messed up and used that. It's um, one and three quarters. You only have to mat the bottom because the um, the bar top is on the top part. One and a quarter. That doesn't look right. I Obviously, think it's. Love Ikea. That's, yeah. I have one and three quarters. Down the street. One and three quarters. Don't cut. Oh, she liked Ikea? I love Ikea. Did you get some chocolate? Now we're talking about detoxing. Did you get the chocolate bars from Ikea? Because they're delish and they're only a dollar and they're huge. I like those sparkly fruit juices they have, too. I don't think they have them all year round, or they get different flavors at different times of the year. They're very good. Yes, they are good. Is that going to sit nice on the bottom? Yeah. They have a pink one I can run down there and get real quick. 
Oh my gosh. You're so funny. Okay. Get this out of the way. Let's stick these down. And I'm going to go ahead and use, um, okay, this paper. Jonna, Jonna, I'm a stamper, said she, she uses her magic bullet. She said you have to have an industrial strength blender to get through that stuff and the seeds. Yes, it's, it's true. And I do have a, um, I do, I use my uh, Nutribullet. Okay. I have one. And it did, it ground it all down for me. But the problem was the wrap, I think maybe it was the flax, whatever. It was just, and some people aren't bothered by it, but it was just a little gritty, the raspberry one. Yeah. The whole thing just sounds like, yeah. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's really actually very good. Um, and um, after one, okay, and I'm not on it for a weight loss thing, but I already know, like, I, could, I already know when I went on the scale. I just wanted to see this morning. So you do end up, you do lose some. Well, of course, if you're drinking something disgusting, you're not gonna gain weight. No, yes, you could. It has all the right amount, right amount of good fats and mm. calories and stuff. No sodium, though. Maybe that's why, Jonna. No processed food. Yeah, no sodium. Yeah. No, um, no, like you're getting oh, carbohydrates. That's a good idea. I'm a stamper, so then she strains it. Why do you have to? You don't have to eat raspberry seeds if you don't want to. You could strain them out. Yeah, I could strain it. I don't have a strainer though. It's still in boxes. My kitchen, my kit, my kitchen, my kitchen is. Oh, would it go through a coffee filter? It's pretty thick. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's like thick. Cheesecloth. The, John, the more you describe it, the more gross it sounds. <laughs> I'm gonna go black again. <laughs> so, the one at the one at night's pretty good, but the blueberry the blueberry does leave a little bit of grittiness to it too. <laughs> Kathy said she's with me. I'm making the sound effects. <laughs> the the nighttime one is um oh and then you're supposed to it's so funny because you get to have a snack and uh your snack is one of your favorite whichever one you like the best <laughs> but the, i don't understand is why you have to grind it all up like why don't you eat a mango and a banana and some pineapple because how are you going to eat how are you going to eat the coconut fat the coconut fat well, my plan would be to skip all the gross stuff. No, but then it no, it all works off. Go a little coconut on top, and it'll actually be like an ambrosia, not like a caca. No. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> so the nighttime, the nighttime one is. <laughs> I'm not Dr. Oz, so what do I know? <laughs> is coconut. Yeah, I didn't do it for weight loss. I just did it to get all the garbage out of my system. That was all because I've been on so much medication. It sounds good. I mean, it sounds like a good process. So, I mean, it's all natural. It's no, you're not like taking anybody else's. I know there's lots of cleansing stuff out there that come in pill and powder form and all that stuff. And this is all just using, you know, natural, low glycemic. Which uh, I've never heard of agave syrup before, so I was pretty excited about hearing about that. Uh -huh. um, yeah, that's exciting. It is when you, because I don't like using like Splend, you know, none of that stuff. Stevia. I had a bottle of that in my pantry. Well, it's not very expensive for a bottle of it. I and it was a good idea once and bought it and then didn't use it. It's really, it's actually very good. I highly recommend it. Do you know there's a guy <laughs> on a diet and lost 20 pounds and the, his diet was he ate what he didn't want. So if he went into a restaurant <laughs> and looked at the menu, he would order stuff he didn't like, which in his case was something like fish and a salad. And he lost weight. Oh my gosh, because Chick already wrote that. She wrote, I should just go out and buy a bunch of stuff I hate. I would lose weight. <laughs> It reminded me of that guy who wrote some article about how he lost weight by eating what he didn't like. Oh my gosh. It's not it's not stuff you don't like though. 
Oh, oh, you didn't tell him how he slips the spinach in there too when you're not looking. Oh yeah, I forgot. You have to have you put spinach and and kale in some of them. <laughs> oh, here I go again. What? I'm telling Doctor Oz. Anyway, like you don't even that. taste the, you don't even taste the kale or the spinach. I swear that part that was the part that freaked me out the most, and you don't even you don't even taste it. Yeah, there you go, Kathleen. That's a healthy that's a healthy diet. What is? No sugar, no salt, no flour. Well, that's basically what it is. But I don't know. Like, you just can't live that way. How do you live that way? That would be like, oh, I mean, I don't know. I would have to have something somewhere along the way. Okay. So we got the bottom done. Yay. Let's, um, let's do the bar top. I eat bread and butter all the time in Denmark, and I didn't gain weight because it's not as processed. Exactly. Although I did gain 10 pounds when I was in Denmark this last time because... Pastry too, right? And cake and stuff. No, I added in chocolate. They have the best yeah. chocolate there. Yeah. I was eating these huge chocolate bars every day. <laughs> every day. I lost weight. I, I mean, I, I didn't lose weight or gain weight. I stayed the same, but I ate... Um, my lunch every day was two rolls, two whole grain rolls with butter and cheese and two donuts every day. Yeah, but you were also, what, 21? Yeah, and I was biking everywhere. Yeah, and you walk everywhere. You bike or you walk. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm not going to use this whole <laughs> I'm not going to use this whole strip. I'm not going to use the whole strip. You only need about just a little bit of the overhang. So... Just a little piece, like a half an inch, that you're going to put on one side. And, okay, here it is. I need to go back through and see if I have to add names to my listy. So this is just going to be the overhang part of the bar. And then this is going to be the top part. And what you want to do is, okay, I went ahead and pre-measured this, but it is a half an inch out and a half an inch in for the holes. So when you go, or two-eighths, whatever you want to call it. No, two-eighths is one-fourth. Four eighths. Where's my four eighths? <laughs> I have one. Four eighths. <laughs> or a half an inch in for the holes. But I went ahead and marked them. So you want to get a normal hole punch. A normal hole punch. I, what is it? One quarter inch, I think, is a regular hole punch. And you're just going to punch the holes for the pole. In the paper first and I'm gonna do my roof paper while I'm at it because I don't know let me get my roof lining paper yeah I didn't mark these so so you're just gonna line your roof lining paper up and you'll punch those the same distance that way you have them Also, for those of you that are signed in and not chatting necessarily, I've written down your names for the giveaway. And um, for those of you that may have popped in after Jonna talked about it, we are giving away one of the Tiki Bars, and we're going to draw names. Hey, Miss Pris. Hey, Miss Pris. And um, we're going to draw names, and so you don't necessarily have to hang out with us for the next, you know, four days or whatever it's going to take. Oh, but, my gosh. Um, and then we'll draw the name for that. And then John is also giving away one of those stencils, the um, bamboo stencil. And the way we like to do it is we don't want to keep anyone who really wants to win the project from winning the project. So... You know, if you win the stencil, for example, you're still in the drawing to win the um, the tiki. So, just thought I would let you guys know. I went, I got all your names so far.
So when you hear scissors, it's because I'm cutting them in pieces to put in something. <laughs> Carol! Hey, Carol! Carol! Carol survived. She survived the tornadoes. Oh my gosh. Awful. I need wet wipes. I got glue everywhere. Carol finally came up from the basement to say hi. Oh, that's okay. I was in the closet the other day. I was too. We don't have basements. We have to go in the closet. We had a tornado warning the other night. But I had my phone in there with me, so I was on. I was tweeting. But my whole deal is okay. Like, is the closet really the safest place? I mean, I don't know. I mean, when you see those houses and they're decimated, it's kind of like, I don't know that anything's safe. Anywhere safe. I was thinking, I was thinking of getting in my, getting in my car and, um, okay, you want to punch it all the way through to the, oh, look what I did. Ah, I did it on the wrong side. Okay, this is the overhang. Peeling that off. Fortunately, I have an extra piece. They um they tell us to go down to the basement because I live in a sixth floor building and I'm thinking, why would I go in the basement and have six floor building crumble on top of me? That didn't make any sense. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's so true. That would be true. Okay, I gotta do that part over again because I wasn't very smart. I ended up gluing it to the wrong side. Let me get the other hole so I don't do it again. Okay. So beware of where your holes are. <laughs> beware, be very aware. Yeah, I don't blame them, Carol. I was thinking about that. Like, we probably have something that's akin to a safe room that's not in the, necessarily in the basement. It might be down on the ground floor. Well, so I was thinking of hiding it. I thought about why don't sit, why don't you sit like in, in Florida, since we have basements. I, I think it'd be safer to sit in your car, in the garage. No, what? Why not? Did you see any garages left standing? Yeah, but then you're in your car. If something falls on your car, you won't be crushed. You'll be in your car on the floor. No, oh, you're flying in the air like those <laughs> newsmen were. Oh, it'll suck your car out of the garage. Heck yeah. Mm, so much for that theory. Yeah, but at least you're then in your car flying around. It's not just you flying around. That'd be terrifying. John, the whole thing's terrifying. Let's face it. It is. I remember that story about the baby here in Florida that was flying around, and it actually ended up in a tree and survived. Gosh. They found the baby. Horrible. Right? Was. Okay, so I'm just going to put this up here. This will be your bar. Oh my gosh, what'd I do? I did yeah, not see. Carol said the cars in the tornado look like they had been wadded up. Ugh. She said your car. Sandy says your car will implode. I don't think that's a good idea, Jonna. I'm not sitting in my car now. Thank you very much. And I messed up. Oh my gosh, this is my last piece of this. Disclaimer, we're going to not recommend that to anyone. <laughs> I cut this too narrow. Uh-oh. Well, cut it again. I am. Oh. Well, that's I'm going to keep it to measure the holes out. I cut Sorry. it. Pretty sorry. How did I cut it too narrow? And the other thing is I don't have a piece. I don't have any more of that. A uh, wood paper. I've got some of this stuff. It's in white. I'll use this. I've got this white paper. I can wood paper. And then, um, chipboard. Sorry, I'm still in here. I'm just walking around. Your tea's not frozen. Carol, everybody wants to know why people live in Tornado Alley. Do you have an answer? <laughs> Uh, 
What did I do wrong? I must have cut this at. Oh, it's supposed to be two. That's the problem. I think this is right. Let me look. On here. Bar top. Oh, it's two and a, two and a quarter. And this is two. It's that fraction. It's that fraction. It'll get you every time. Sorry, I have to be off screen for this. So two and a quarter. Yeah, I don't know, Carol. I don't anymore. The argument for hurricanes is you usually have plenty of notice to get out. Okay, let me check this now. Okay, good. You need a little bit of, you need an overhang for the people to, <laughs> to pull up to. Oh my gosh. Okay. Here we go. Wow. That's so scary, Shy. Cleaning out your hole punch is a good thing. Okay, I haven't looked at the chat in a while. What's going on? Okay. Back on course. A little snap. My air conditioning unit died. I have no AC right now in, you know, <laughs> 90 degree weather, and I didn't have anything bad happen. Although they think it might have been a power surge from those thunderstorms, those thunder and lightning. If so, it was, wouldn't your insurance cover your air conditioner or no? I don't know. I emailed the guy. So, two and a quarter. By five and a quarter. Get rid of that. That'd be long. Okay. Oh. okay. Put this on the bottom. Let's see, two and a quarter. Oh, I already did that one. By five and a quarter. Shockwave. Me? No, Sandy. She said she's getting messages and it crashed. Oh. I always go in and check my plugins to see if they're up to date. And sometimes when you do an update, it doesn't work. But lately, the, if you do them, it tends to work a little better. But I got Firefox, so. Okay, now I'm just, because I messed up that other piece, I'm just going to do it with wood. I did that on my original. Okay. I didn't even know you guys had tornadoes in Tennessee. Did you, Jonna? I think tornadoes can just about go anywhere. Oh. I didn't even I know. I didn't know we had them here. Holy cow. I don't think they can be in a mountain, though. We had one right in downtown Atlanta. Oh. It's best in berries and nice red. Yeah, I want that red. I think I'm going to add a little red to it. I kind of like the red red top. Oh. Um, Sandy, you would go to your tools. You go to tools, and then you go to add-ons. And then on your add-on list, there's a little underscore that says check plugins to see if they're up to date. And you may find that it's not. And then you can upgrade it. Oh, Miss Chris said her video is choppy today. Hmm. Tell her to hit pause. I know when I hit pause, I let it sit for a little bit. That helps. Okay. Try and pause and let it sit for a little bit. 
Oh, I thought you were going to type it in. We're just telling her. <laughs> I forgot. She can hear. Oh, my Sorry, gosh. Cash. You know, I probably could have used just the stain on this. But then it'd be wet and I'd have to dry it. So for time's sake. Yeah, I noticed that too, Jean. It got choppy about 15 minutes ago. You know, and sometimes there's stuff going on on Ustream and then there's nothing you can do about it. Am I at the hour and a half point? Because somebody said an hour and a half last. Yeah, because yeah, it's, it's almost noon. Oh, yeah, then, I, no, I'm at an hour then. I started at 11. Okay. Because somebody said, um, I yeah, forgot. Was said it? hers always crashes after, like, an hour and a half. Yeah. But they said it used to be an hour, but now it's an hour and a half. But maybe it is an hour. Okay. Oh, my goodness. Now what? This was um this was paper studio, the wood paper, um which is Hobby Lobby's brand. That's what I used. John, I might have to clear cash. Me, I already did it this morning. All these little pieces left. I have to reach across because I've got this little roller with my. I don't think that that's gonna it works when I'm by myself. Here's my craft knife. Good for you, Jean. She said she she needs to start working, but she'll be listening in. Okay, Jean, work away. I like to put it on when you're working in your scrap room and your um when you're organ when I was organizing that week. Oh my gosh, because organizing is boring. When you do it by yourself. It sure is. I just have so much like little doodads that I don't know what to do with. That's why I bought that scrap rack, but it takes up a lot of space. Unless you're only, well, that's because I have two of them. So I'm going to take up a lot of space. Um, uh, Felicia. Did the cutest storage unit. I think I'm going to make one for all the little like sticker packs and alphas and things that you want to have out to use. Uh -huh. um, I'm going to put in the link to her blog. It's, she made it out of post office boxes. And I get so many of those flat rate boxes because I buy so much stuff. But um, I'm going to start just kind of hanging on to them and I may make one of those. She just cuts them down and puts them back to back to make a slotted box. Right. And then she stands her stuff up in it. That's okay. I'll go get I'll go get the link because it's a, a nice handy storage thing. I think it just depends on whether I think when you go to organize, it just depends on. Remember, you took that. I know you took an organizing class where it talks about if you like container, you have to have your stuff all out. How many steps away? I know that's how I figure it out for me. Yeah, well, yep, and she's the same way. She has to see it out. I have to see mine out. It can only be like one step away. Yeah. I can't have like pull a drawer out and then I have to pull it out the stamp out of plastic. I can't. I can't do that. Okay. Well, she says that's why Lynn is here. I know. It's overwhelming at times. The other thing I found really helpful is when I'm sorting, 
when I get an idea like, oh, I need a place to put my templates. I need a place to put my chipboard scraps. I need, I just put it into something and then I write it down so that when I'm designing my storage, I know what I need to store. And that's the that I, that I don't have a place for. And that's been really helpful. Okay. <laughs> Take two. It looks like the last one. Well, you, you don't have to reset your computer. Don't, it's not a, it's a take two. Okay, so we want to put this on the top. Make sure I put it on the top, not the bottom. There. Okay, let's take a little break for a second. Yeah, there you go, Margaret. Just stick it in a box. If you don't use them within a month, get rid of them. Oh my God, do you know that'd be most of my studio? That'd be my whole studio. <laughs> I have stuff in here from years ago. I was laughing so hard when I was unpacking my boxes because I was like, oh, look at vintage, vintage uh, Tim Holtz paper, <laughs> like from when he was with Design Originals. <laughs> I need to take, I need to take a piece of that when I go to, um, look at my hands, I need my scrubby, um, when I go to Italy and have him sign it. You should. We have a really cute project coming up for when we get back from Italy. I can't wait. We do. Okay, close your eyes because I'm going to come up. I have to turn and hurry. I have to turn it and, oh my goodness. Okay, there. Is that good? Okay, but that doesn't really help because I have to look to the side because I now have my... Now, uh oh, I dropped something. I now have my computer to the side, not in front of me. Make it three months. <laughs> in your case, make it three months. <laughs> maybe like six, maybe a year would be probably better. I mean, does which, that go for like everything? Does that, John, not, what? Which give somebody like larger scraps, do you think, would they appreciate that or no? Give like some a half the size paper. Well, okay. I have a friend of mine who she's never scrapbooked in her life, and she just had a baby, and so she'll take anything and everything because she has nothing, and okay. she doesn't have the money to go out and you know because she's got a new baby, and she doesn't have the money to go out and buy all that stuff. So I save everything. I've given her new. I've given. I mean, I, when I cleaned out my scrap rack, I gave her like a whole box of stuff. Yeah, because I have somebody who has never done it before, kind of became enamored of it, and um, she's had a bunch of things she wants to do, like her wedding, honeymoon, something for her mom, so she could pretty much use anything. I'm laughing because Heavenly Ma'am goes, you don't throw paper out for goodness sake. No, I wouldn't throw it out. What? No, never. <laughs> I would like recycle it or upcycle it or give it to somebody I know who can use it. I don't, but I just don't have the space to hang on to all my scraps. Like, and then I get really tired of it. So what I started to do was my scraps from like, a, if I make a project and I'm just over it, like right now I've done like two projects using the MME's uh, Breaking Free because it was such a big kit that I had that I'm just like over it. And so now what I do is I've been bagging it with, along with the stickers and all the little embellishments that go that I had left over. And then I'll just put that in a bin and I'll give that to her. So I don't throw it out. But at least she's a place where I can, uh, she's somebody that I can give it to. And I know like um, youth groups will use it and uh, Girl Scouts, things like that. You did that, Darcy. You brought it. You were de decorating shoe boxes, and you brought all your yeah for homeless um, women and children. And then they ended up decorating the the uh, shoe boxes with the yeah. Uh, okay, Heavenly Mom. Yeah, if you don't like it, you can paint it. Yes, that's true. And I, when I was messing around with my jelly plate, I was using <clears throat> I was using up my old some of my old scrap stuff. It just, it's overwhelming. It's overwhelming sometimes. I'm just saying. I just, what happened was I worked at a scrapbook store and um, they took it out. They took my work. I didn't like work there, but I volunteered there. And they took out my hours and they would give me 
um, they give me scrapbook supplies. So I've got like more than, I had more than enough for just that one year. But a swap sounds really good, especially if you can. Oh, that's a great idea. Unless you have everything, and then when you do the swap, you end up getting the stuff that you already have. <laughs> I'm kidding. I don't have everything. I don't think everybody has the same stuff. I don't. I think everybody's taste is different. Nursing homes, yep, that's good. Yeah, that's good because they like to make cards. Elementary school, that's a great idea. Yeah, See, I, I don't have kid stuff. That's why I think the nursing home is a good idea. I have all the flowery lady stuff. Yep, that's why I'm giving not bed moms in a nursing home, but that's why I been I have like two big boxes I'm <laughs> taking up to my taking up to my mom our mom because um she start she had to do an album a scrapbook album she doesn't doesn't scrapbook so she didn't have a lot of things she likes to make cards she makes beautiful cards and so Darcy and I kind of got her started on that and she'd always done crafting so she had a lot of the tools. And so anyway, they had to do a scrapbook for their uh, a function that's coming up this week. And so she did a scrapbook. And so I said, Mom, don't go out. Don't you guys go out and buy. It was for her little group. I said, don't go out and buy all kinds of stuff. I'll just send it to you. So that's what I did. Yeah. I am in love with the metallic gelatos. Hey, Mitzi. I love the gelatos. I use them all the time. I love all the gelatos. And I ended up, because I had all the kid ones, I had the kid ones, and I had, this is the new set. Oh, I'm not up, I'm down, I'm mean, I'm up. That's not great, down. Chai. And you know what? Not everyone has the same stuff, and not everyone's been doing this for the same length of time. Correct. So something that may be old to you might be new to somebody else. Okay. Um, these are the new tropical colors, the gelatos. These are the new colors they have for the tropical. And then these are the new colors they have for the 50s diner. Of course, I had to get these. Love those. Did you end up getting these, Darcy? I did. I thought maybe you bought me some, but I don't think you did, so I bought them. I didn't buy them for you because I asked you if you had them. and you, I No, I, th I asked if you had gelatos. You said, I have them all. Yeah. So I didn't know, but anyway, I got those. No, I bought those. I they're on order. I bought. So, I mean, they're coming. The so, diner in the tropical, yeah. Yeah, the diner is tropical. Those are the new two sets. They're not in. If you have the big gelato kit, they're not in that one. However, I did buy the um the. Oh my gosh, that's so cute, Sandy. She said the home her dad is in had a ladies' hat contest. They decorated the hats and modeled them afterwards. Oh, see, that would be a nice place maybe to bring, like, I have a lot of flowers, and I mean, you can only use so many flowers in your lifetime, so, stuff like that. So, before I got my real gelatos, I had bought the ones by the Fabric Castell, the kids line. Okay, sorry to tell you this, but I don't see, I don't see a difference between them. Like, I did everything. I put two things side by side and swiped and watered and colored. And I always thought that they were more pigmented. Right. And they're, But they're not, Darcy. I, and they actually, the kids' ones were actually smoother and easier to, they were actually easier. Okay, plus I bought these Crayola ones. Okay, well, we won't say that that tells us about you, but that's okay. <laughs> no, but what, anyway, they have metallic. I'm just saying, they have metallic, um... Send John a kid's supply. She's good with those. <laughs> no, they were the fabric cast. So I just got them because everybody was bragging on them. So I thought, well, I'm going to get them. And then I put them side by side. I couldn't tell a difference. That's funny. Anyway. So this they're is. Water, they're water soluble. My new, my new project is a nightmare. So the, I'm making this. Okay, I saw this on the internet. I need to bring my camera down. I saw this on the internet where you could take your watercolors and you could put them in this clear tube. Clear tubing. Remember I told you about that? And you can make little mini water kits that you can put in your pocket. And I thought, oh, how cute. So I had to cut the tubing down. You cut the tubing down a quarter of an inch. And then you um, 
Then you put it in Altoid tin. So you put all these in here, and then you jam. I decided to use gelatos because I thought that'd be easier to smash in there. So then you put them in the tube, and then you line them all up inside your little tin. You have to fill the whole tin up, and they just jam in there, and they all hold. You don't have to glue them at all. But then you have like a little mini water kit the size of a mini Altoid tin. But I don't have a drinking straw. No, it's um, clear tubing I got from uh, um, a fish tank, fish tank tubing. Uh, okay. Because it's it'll stick together, so when it's in there, it's like the friction of all the plastic tubing kind of holds it. But you have to fill it. But I think I'm going to do the bottle cap one. He does one with a bottle cap because it's very tedious to fill an Altoid. I, I, think it, I think like 40 of them go in a little Altoid tin. Or you can just buy Neo2 water-soluble crayons, cut them up, and throw them in an outplay bin. <laughs> but then you're, like, doing this. Uh, I guess. I don't know. I just thought it was a cool idea. He made it look really cool, so I'm working on it. I have till October. I have till October. Okay, let's get back to work. Let me see what's going on. I sawed oh. all my Neo2s in half. Some people are going to gasp because they're really expensive. They are But expensive. I sawed them all in half so that I could have a complete set here and a complete set for on the road. Oh my gosh, I couldn't do mine. I couldn't cut mine in half. Okay, so I got my, I got the kids ones at, um, where did I get the kid ones? Joann's had them. You can, you can get them online too at Joann's. Oh, here, people don't know what they are. I can show you on paper. Let me grab something. Uh, I'll grab this one. Let me go back down. Turn your heads. Okay. Well, we're taking a little, we'll take a gelato break. Fun, fun. So, um, you can use them. Let me get some of the, let me get some of my. Uh, you can just um, swipe them and you can use them as is. I'll do hot pink. Let's do a, so you can color them in. Yeah, they all have, there's tons of videos out there. Lots of videos, but while we're in here taking a little break, we can. Okay, I'm just going to draw a kindergarten flower. because. But anyway, you just do this. And then you can just leave them waxed in. Leave them by himself. You can take water and you can... Which I don't have any water here. Oh my gosh. Be right back. Oh, wait. I do have a spritzer. Oh, there we go. Oh, John, where'd you get the new ones, the Tropical and the Thrifty Steiner? Oh, I got those at Scrapbook Expo. Okay, okay then you can blend with a um, brush. And they blend out with a brush. These are the new Tropical ones. So you can move them around. Now, I did find out when you gesso your paper, they do move better. They do blend better when you gesso the paper. This is, um, uh, I don't know what this is. Um, it feels smooth. Might be bristle. So anyway, you can do that and blend them. You can also, uh, let me grab a stamp. Because you can just use them right on. You can use them right on the stamp. Now this is what the lady at the Faber Castell thing did. She just did this, and she didn't even put water on it. She just did it direct from the pad. Now I haven't tried it. You get a light one, but if you do it with. So you get a light print. But if you put it on your pad, oh, 
I'm not in the, in the thing. And then I'll spray it. And then stamp it. I'm assuming it'll come out brighter. And it does. So without water, with water. And it's really cool because, like, for doing backgrounds, I really liked it for doing the backgrounds because you can just blend them. Oh, the other thing you can do with them, too, say you want to do that and you want to do backgrounds, then you can take your wet wipe. You can take a, a wet wipe and you can, they blend out awesome with the wet wipe. Look at that. Without, so I really use them with the wet wipe instead of using a brush. <laughs> because I think they blend out so much better. Or a sponge, you can blend them with a wet sponge. Yep, and then you, yep, they're saying you can also blend them with your finger, which you can if you want, since my fingers are already inky. And you can blend them, they blend even like pull from the pink into the thing. So I'm not a gelato expert, I just know, I only know that what I saw, the, the lady at Faber Castell showed me some stuff with it and I just thought it was cool stuff. John had a good time at Scrapbook Expo. <clears throat> I did. I ended up meeting a lot of people, like manufacturer people, which was really cool. So, and then you can um, you can use your, I'll take this, for instance. Let me get a black pen. And then you can just, like, do a stencil on top of them. You can do right, you know, right on top. Right on top of them, just using a Sharpie. Right on top of it. So fun. Um, are they pricey? You know what? Comparatively speaking, I don't think that they're that bad. Uh, if you buy, I think they're pricey if you buy like two. That's why if you're just starting, I would highly recommend buying the Faber Castell the, the children's one first. See if you like them first, yeah. yeah. See if you like them because I think they pretty much they work the same way. They blend out. They're nice. Um, and then if you really like them, then go ahead. I think it's like it was fifty dollars for fifty dollars for I don't know how many come in the big kit. You get a water pen though, which is worth ten. Okay, this is the big kit. You get a water pen. You, they have blending tools, which are really—it looks like a makeup sponge and some thingy. And then you get all the. Um, let me see if I can bring my camera up a little bit there. So you get all these colors, and that was fifty. So, but yeah, you can use your half price coupon. That, now I haven't seen the big kit at Joanne's. If they carry the big kit or not, but if they do and you can use your coupon, go for it. But you know, your water pen in there's ten dollars. I mean, you go buy a water pen anywhere and it's ten bucks and it comes with it, so you get a lot. You get a lot. It's cheaper than buying the three, the two, two for nine. I think it's like two for nine dollars or something like that. Two colors, and you can get like two or three colors in a box. So it is cheaper to buy the big one instead. Okay, let's get back to work. Well, no, I just pulled out my camera holder. There we go. Okay, we good? We're good. Yeah, Michael's has coupons, Hobby Lobby has coupons. If anybody has a smartphone, I download the apps onto my smartphone and I don't have to carry around paper coupons with me anymore. I just see they scan your phone and while you're right there. So if you end up on if you end up on that side of town, just and you didn't know you were gonna be there, then you just pull it open. Okay, let's get back. Let's do the straws. Okay, the deal with the straws, you need water, sprayer. You need to cut out two pieces of paper that are one and a half inch by four inches. And you're gonna cut your straw. Um, and you need two pieces that are four inches long. 
so they're four inches long and you need two pieces of straw that is four inches so I'm gonna cut and then I'm gonna cut the other one and I need to heat up okay I experimented with this and used all kinds of glue and I and the best adhesive to use is um, for putting the poles in is hot glue so hang on I got to grab my hot glue gun and I got to get it kicking is my camera upside down no yeah oh shoot I'm upside down Am I upside down? You're upside down. Okay, hang on. Are you? Am no. I? No, it's that's just a funny angle. Is it a funny angle? No, you're not upside down. It's just a funny angle. It's not flat, pointing flat to the table. Okay. Hang on, close your eyes. I wonder why it's not flat pointing to the table. Now you gotta go the other way. Yeah. Now away from you. I know, I was trying to do it away from me. But then it goes that way. And then that way. I don't know, I don't have the same angle that I started with. No. I don't know why. Because I I spun it. <laughs> That's a mystery. I spun it around and now I don't know what happened. Now I have more of this side. Okay. Let's, so anyway, so all you're going to do is, I, I wet my paper just a little bit to get the pulp moving. And then, what you're going to do, you don't want to do a whole lot. You just want it to where it's going to bend and go around without cracking and also not looking lumpy. So why did that do all that lumpiness? Okay, so once you have it going around your straw, like that. Oh, I pro you know what? I'll do the other one. Then you want to, we're just going to adhere it down. So we're going to put, I'm going to put a little piece of score tape right there. And glue it. Oh, that's nice, Kathleen. Hey, Maria. Oh, it would have helped to see the green. See how it's, you can, you should maybe check the green in your paper too. It helped because see, this is automatically just crawling that way. Would have been good if I cut it the other way. But anyway, it's not, it's okay. When you get a chance, Jonna, show Loriana the project. Okay. We're making a TV bar mini. The mini pulls out of the tiki bar, so this sits inside, pulls out, and then it opens up, and then you have your mini inside. And then it slides back down into your tiki bar. Yay! Just in time for summer. Although it's been hot here all week. It's been like roasting. It's been yep, roasting. Yep. So I'm doing the poles right now. Johnna, you, you may want to stop and, and save that at some point here. Okay. So I'm doing the poles. But I'm not going to do this one just yet because I want to show you how to what it looks like on the inside. So you want to take, hang on, I'll be, one second. I need, you need chipboard that is four inches by 
an eighth of an inch. Four inches by an eighth of an inch. Oh yeah, it is a little weird. I need to get that worked out next break. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna create an anchor. No, that looks too thin. Let me look. Did I write this wrong? I'm trying to go by my... Okay. Six inches. I'm going to do a, I'm going to do a quarter. Mariana thinks your tiki bar is fabulous. Thank you. Hold in there one minute. I lost my chipboard. Okay, so some of the six by quarter. Okay, so you need four of these, six by a quarter. <laughs> quarter. And I'm using medium weight. A quarter. Two more. I need to fix it. On the um, on the tutorial, it says one eighth. It should be one quarter. So fix. You might want to change that if you're doing on the tutorial under bar top and poles. Well, we can change it later too. I'm gonna change it. Yeah, but if you downloaded it and you're doing this today. That's bad. Just slid and cut that off. Just move and cut that straight again. So you need four of these. Four. Oh, I think it works better if you slide up when you're doing chipboard for some reason because this thing just wants to slide all around. Thanks for stopping by. Bye. She said it's nice and sunny today where uh, she lives. So. It is here, too. Yeah, it's, it's nice here, too. It's just really hot. <laughs> <laughs> it's hot. It is really hot. Okay, four of those. Got that. Okay, so you're going to take your straw, and you're going to run two of these up the end of the straw, like that. Then you're gonna have a half inch or so on either side. And you're gonna fold the flap, you're gonna fold them down like that. And they're gonna create like an anchor underneath the bar. And then eventually you'll do the rooftop too, the same way. So there's that. So I just wanted to show it what it looked like when you pulled it through the straw before you roll it roll it with the paper but you just tuck them in pull them through one side pull them through the other side so you have little flaps Ooh, I did that one really short yep that way that way that way and that way the sides a little bit too long. <clears throat> so you have an anchor. Let's just push that flat. Push that flat. Push that one flat. That one flat. And let's roll it. Oh shoot, I gotta wet it again. That helps it roll. Bye. Bye, Margaret. Bye, Margaret. Okay, so you roll these in, and then you covered your, now you can paint them if you want, whatever. I just, um, I liked it just with the paper on it.
You can even run some molding paste over it. Give it a little texture if you want. Okay, so now you got your two poles done. And what you're going to do is we're going to attach this to the bottom. So you're going to put them through. Oh, put them off camera. Put them through and then stick them down like that. So thread them through the hole. Might want to turn them a little bit long. So you want to trim anything that comes off. Okay, and then we will just glue that down. And I'm gonna go ahead and use hot glue because I've used, I made this like four times and tried every glue and uh, the best thing to use is the hot glue for stability. This has nothing to do with the album. This is just a little, like keepsake. I'm not expecting it to last like years and years and years. And then I want to go in and I'm going to anchor, going to anchor the bottom of the straw in and push down. Putting the seam to the back. Hey Vivian, how are you? Hey Vivian. So that's Jonathan. one done. Jonna is highly focused right now. I am because I messed up already and I, want, I don't want to mess up anymore. <gasps> so stick it through again. Make sure when you do this part of the seam is to the back of your tiki bar. We're going to glue the little tabs down on the underside. You open up the tabs and you hold it. And then we're going to anchor on the underside of the pole. And this just keeps it from going anywhere. And you push down. And that holds it really stable so your roof won't be flopping all over the place. Okay. So anyway, that's kind of what we got so far. And let's go ahead and put the roof on. Put the roof on. Yeah. Decorate. Yeah. Um, she says, Vivian says she loves the tiki. Thank <laughs> you. I know. It's, so it's cute. fun. We just make what we like. You know, if somebody else likes it, that's great. Yeah, because I was going to make it anyway, whether you like it or not. <laughs> We just make stuff. We just make, we just make, right now I'm currently making a mess. Okay, now let's talk about the roof. Okay, the roof, I ended up using the um, Sizzix. Tim Holtz makes a fringe die, okay? So I cut a bunch of the fringe die out, and that's how I use this. However, Martha Stewart, if you don't have that, Martha Stewart has scissors. And you can use her scissors to create a fringe. You can hand cut fringe if you want. So um, it's not that hard to hand cut fringe once you see what this looks like with, I mean, just go down and cut little, you know, triangles, cut little V's and keep a little edge, quarter inch edge to hold it all together. And that's, that's the fringe. Yeah, I had, I hand cut mine because I don't have, uh, I don't have any of that. So. Yeah, if you don't have the fringe die. So anyway, so that's what we're going to start on. We're going to do the roof. And um, we got the top part and all the little fringy things. Oh, and then also, um, for time's sake, I'm not taking you over to my sewing machine. But I did it on my sewing machine. I made a little flower garland. That would be horrible. Oh, <laughs> Darcy was on Skype with me when I did this. That oh, my would be goodness. <laughs> and um, so, anyway. The, uh, yeah, so I did a little garland with those got milk little prima flowers, and I just stitched them all together using my sewing machine. And I think Mitzi just got a sewing machine. 
Didn't she get us? Didn't she tweet it yesterday? Vivian says she has posts, so she has. She can make plenty of friends. Oh, okay, awesome, Vivian. <laughs> so, um, I think Betsy's the one that got um. Got yeah, that got the sewing machine. So that we were talking about, we just used duct tape to hem our pants. So anyway, sew your flowers together. I just shove them in there and stitch them all together, and, and I got a little garland. So that's how I got the flower garland. You yep. can stitch all kinds of stuff together to make a garland. It's really fun. Yeah, that's true. If you have little mini seashell die cuts or anything like that, that'd be cute. Yep. Okay, so the roof section is six and a quarter by uh, two and a half. Oh, um, the paper line is Kaiser Craft Tropicana. Well, they call it Kaiser Craft. We call it Kaiser Craft. Do you want to show the pad, Jonna? Yeah. It's Kaiser Craft. Yeah. Kaiser Craft. Oh, see what you mean there. Well, they're Australian, and they call it Kaiser. And it's the Tropicana line. These are all the papers in it. And some of them are glossy, and some of them are flat. And I'm kicking myself that I didn't get the big sheet that I got the small. I got the small ones because I knew I was doing a mini. But, like, this is glossy. These are really cute because they're, like, little postcard snapshots, and you can cut them out. Darcy, how come you're not in as a mod? I am in as a mod. I'm blue. Oh, that's weird. It's not coming because I'm on pop out. Probably. Oh. Uh, can I get the paper on your side? And how much is it? Um. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah, we don't have a site. Oh, I don't have a site. Sorry. Anybody in the, here this morning that has a site, you can post it if you carry this. <laughs> we don't have a site. We, we're just crafters. We just do this for fun. We do have a blog that you can get the, you can print out the, um, the tutorial for the Tiki Hut. It's free. You can just go in there. We've got several tutorials on the blog and you can print them out. They're all free for any of the stuff we've made. Darcy's posting the blog. Okay, so let's do this real quick. I, maybe I should stop it. I'll stop the record here. And um, what time is it? Where am I at? I don't like the old broadcaster. It doesn't show you how long you've been recording for. I, I don't know where I got mine from. I think I got mine from scrapbooks.com. Hey, Darcy, what? can you see how long I've been recording for? You've been recording for an hour and a half. Okay, I'm going to stop the record, and then I'll start it over again. So hang on one second.